that's 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 outrageous. What happened tonight? This is completely BS. This is shame. Shame for the referees, shame for the league to allow this. 23 free throws for them, and we get two free throws in, in the fourth quarter. So we've got a live one on our hands, sports fans. Raptors coach Darko Ryakovich lit the whole thing on fire, and of course, it has to be the Lakers of all teams that is being accused of favorable whistles. For what it's worth, eight of those free throws he's complaining about were take fouls to stop the clock at the very end. I understand uh, respect for all stars and all of that, but we have star players on our team as well. How's possible is Scotty Barnes, who is all star caliber player in this league? He goes every single time to the rim with force and trying to get get uh, to the, to the rim without flopping and and not trying to get foul calls. He gets two uh, free throws for the whole game. How is that possible? This is not an act. I repeat, he's not faking his anger. And it's worth looking at some of Scotty's shots to see if there were any foul calls that the refs missed. He posted up LeBron in the second and severely airballed this shot with a lot of complaining afterwards. The most I can see from this angle is a high five contact, which is when the defender contacts the shooting hand just after release. And this is legal contact per the rule book. He went at LeBron in the post again, and LeBron does a great job to be in legal guarding position, so this contact isn't a foul at all. Love the one-footed step through, and does LeBron's swipe make contact with the arm? Impossible to tell from this angle, but you can already see Darko getting upset in the sidelines, knowing where this is all heading. Over the game, they got 36 free throws, 23 free throws in, in the fourth quarter. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? How are we going to supposed to play? From the start of the season to the Lakers beat the Pacers in the in-season tournament, LA ranked fourth in free throw attempt rate at 30%. But since then, it plummeted to 25.1, ranking them 17th. It's probably not a coincidence that they lost 10 of those games heading into last night's match versus the Raptors. But let's look at the calls to see if they were legit. Barnes goes to the rim. There is contact with D'Lo before he gets his shot blocked cleanly by Chris Wood. Barnes definitely has a gripe as there is contact as he gathers the ball, but D'Lo did disengage and Barnes got his right hand out into the defender's body, so I can shrug at this no call. And a few minutes later, a similar drive does get him a foul call, but before the shot and he didn't get free throws. So perhaps the refs were listening to their complaints. Then you had him going at AD in isolation, which is tough because AD is an elite defender and will get the benefit of the doubt, deservedly so. But this type of contact on the way up is certainly disruptive of a shot attempt. He did get clear of the contest to get it off and impressively make this one. Notice no one on the bench, nor Scotty himself, had a problem with the no call here. This one felt like it could have been a foul call as there is a lot of contact and Prince's left arm almost gets stuck in the cookie jar. Credit to how tough Barnes is that it doesn't affect his shot in the slightest, but I don't think anyone would have complained had he gotten free throws here. For what it's worth, it looks like LeBron got hit in the head on this dunk and Barnes didn't get called for it. LeBron holds his head at the very end of the play and on the replay, it looks like the elbow does make contact. Barnes attacks AD off the dribble, clear hack across the arm, but there is a delay in the call, infuriating Darko since he thinks they're waiting for the result before blowing the whistle. This looked controversial for a minute as Barnes had good position and didn't foul Davis, but watch the ref. Late calls don't make anybody feel good, but sometimes they need to process what they saw for a beat, and he immediately makes this call on quickly. With the review, it's clear quickly foolishly pushes AD and gets caught red-handed, good call. People who argued with me on Twitter over this one seemed crazy to me. A rip through with elbows at the face level of the defender is dangerous, almost always gets called an offensive foul when there's contact, and often is upgraded to a flagrant foul. If you're teaching this move and telling the offensive player to get their elbows at the face level of the defender, please stop. Teach them to put the ball at the face level instead. Check Ben Taylor demonstrating the correct way to do this move. The rules clearly state that potential for injury resulting from contact, for example a blow to the head, makes this a flagrant. Reddish looked like he could have had a concussion, and thankfully it looks like they did some concussion protocol, but I'm still worried as he continued to grab at his head several minutes after getting slammed in the jaw by an elbow. I appreciate IQ checking in on Reddish, and shout out to the Raptors medical staff for making sure his elbow was okay too. I thought this was impressive dexterity by Thaddeus Young to one hand this attempt. Was there a little push in the back, and then some contact on release from the front? For sure, but on the other end, RJ foolishly fouls Davis on a layup attempt to give them a three point play that proved absolutely crucial. 
Lots of people think there's a conspiracy by the NBA to give the Lakers a ton more free throws than their opponents, but it turns out their record isn't that great over the past three seasons when they get to the line a lot more. But this info could certainly help when playing prize picks. You can choose the over or under on a number of different stats. With prize picks, you're only competing with yourself and you can choose two or more players from any sport. Pick more or less on their projected stats and place your entry. Here are my picks for tonight as I'm thinking everyone is going to fill up the box score across these three games, so play along with me. Go to prizepicks.com CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Austin Reeves is a lightning rod for fans across the NBA. Is he a hyper-skilled ball handler able to draw legit fouls on command? Or is he a foul-baiting exasperator that should never get the benefit of the doubt? I'm not in love with veering to the defender with an open shoulder to initiate contact like this, but Schroeder did something extremely similar earlier in the quarter, which means the refs are being consistent and that's the most important thing. This one was weird. It looks like Gary Trent Jr. fouled Christie after the offensive rebound, but the play-by-play -play tells us that the call was on Barrett, who cannot believe it. To show you how good the refs are, the left hand swipe was clean, but check the right hand raking down on Christie's left arm. Great call and legit free throws for the Lakers. I was surprised AD didn't get a call on this steal from Barrett, but it looks clean as Barrett's right hand knocked it away and there was no grab by the left arm. On the other end, Barnes doesn't get free throws because Reeves defends with perfect verticality. Arms straight up in the air like this means the contact is legal, but it helps the Raptors immensely as Trent nails the triple on the offensive rebound and kick out. Here is a huge stop AD got denying Barnes at the rim, and in this situation, I think it's pretty reasonable to assume the refs aren't going to get involved on marginal contact like this. It's not quite a 50-50 call, maybe 70-30 in favor of a no call, and notice Darko isn't upset about it either. On the switch, AD does a great job to seal Siakam. Great pass by LeBron, and again, the Raptors take the foul instead of giving up the layup. And this one was the real killer. Down three with 25 seconds left, Barrett catches AD out of position on his man and pitches it back. Why on earth did he have to step in front of Davis with his arms up like this? It just makes him look guilty versus just letting his momentum take him in a direction where maybe AD bumps into him a little bit. Instead, the refs have to call it, and AD completely sells his contact in what could be construed as a flop, but that doesn't supersede the Barrett foul that negated the game-tying three. This might have been too little too late, but Barnes manhandles Christie on his way to the hoop before smashing on him, but it's hard to understand why this wasn't called a foul. There's tons of illegal contact by the defender right as he's gathering the ball, which means this would have been a continuation. Of all the drives Barnes had, this was the one Darko has the best case for, and cutting the lead to two is a much bigger difference than cutting it to three. The Lakers then got all those free throws as the Raptors had to stop the clock and the game finished with the Lakers in the lead. Did they benefit from some calls? Maybe, but is it any different than a typical home team in the NBA? Did they hit clutch shots that earned them the victory? You bet. Did the Raptors make a couple of unnecessary mistakes? For sure. This game wasn't decided by a few no calls against Scotty Barnes, but Darko is sure going to pay out the nose for his comments anyway. Coach was absolutely irate about the fourth quarter discrepancy in free throws, 23 to 2. How did you see the, did you see it called fairly in the fourth quarter? Um, I felt like they fouled and we didn't. 